I'm standing on surface of Mars. It feels really, really dry and empty. It almost feels like a dead planet. Now, is it? On September 28, 2015, NASA has made a really important announcement. They have discovered that there is actually liquid water on Mars, and not just in ice form, liquid. It occurs every summer, and it's really exciting, because what this implies is that this beautiful planet, also known as Mars, may, after all, harbor life. <laughs> Hello YouTube and welcome to What The Math. In today's video we're going to be talking a little bit about the recent announcement from NASA. This is actually something from September 28th, 2015. And we're going to talk about the importance of their announcement and also uh, we're going to try to terraform Mars yet again. This is uh, terraforming Mars 2.0 because uh, in my first video where I terraformed Mars it was a lot easier. It actually wasn't as hard as it is now because now if you enable climate it is close to impossible to terraform it. Unfortunately this has been a problem in a recent edition of uh, Universe Sandbox 2. Hopefully this will get resolved soon. But we're going to disable climate just for now because we want to make this a little bit easier on ourselves. So anyway, so what is this announcement? What is it? Why is it so important? And let's, let's talk about Mars and let's start terraforming it. So what uh, NASA has recently announced is that they have officially discovered that Mars definitely has liquid water on it. They've discovered that by looking at, let me just slow this down, by looking at really closely at, at its surface and uh, up until now we thought it was a desert-like environment and it is a desert-like environment, but the thing is, there's actually streaks that kind of look like there's liquid water. Now, this is not exactly what we're looking at because we're looking at microscopic size streaks or streaks that are really, really tiny. Here's a picture of this from NASA and they've discovered this by looking at various pictures of Mars from this uh, from the satellites uh, that are basically orbiting it and they discovered that yes there's something going on every summer when it gets to a temperature of about minus 23 degrees uh, why is it so cold right now it should be warmer than this anyway when it gets to about minus 23 degrees in the summer Martian summer that is you can actually definitely see that something liquid causes the streaks to occur. Now, this is really important because what this means is that not only is there is there ice on Mars, which is what we see right here, but there's also definitely liquid water. Now, how is it possible? How is it? How does it form? Why is it even a thing? Now, let's uh, start by going here. So now we know there's water. We're going to add some water and make sure that this we're going to make some more ice caps, actually. And uh, let's talk about it. So the way this occurs is uh, by s via something called deliquescence. Now, this is a phenomenon that actually occurs on Earth as well, um, specifically in deserts. There, uh, There's a few deserts where this is a very regular occurrence. This is essentially when you have um, particles of salt, like, for example, uh, sodium chloride, which is table salt, or any other kind of salt that is in the air and it starts to essentially acquire moisture from the air. As it acquires moisture, um, it is eventually becomes... Ooh, too much, too much water. Uh, this is too much. Is this too much? I think it's too much. Um, it eventually becomes a uh, liquid. So, um, a similar thing happens on Mars. So, because there is quite a lot of salt everywhere, uh, that salt... Uh, at some point acquires moisture from the air uh, because there is uh, ice on Mars that you know that releases water particles and uh, under certain conditions specifically when it gets warm enough the liquid water starts to basically uh, precipitate and becomes just like you know like morning dew have you ever seen morning dew in the morning the water on the leaves and moisture in the air uh, not in the air sorry on uh, things like uh, window and um, grass and so on. So that uh, morning dew is uh, basically created via deliquescence process. Now this is what's happening here on Mars as well and this water then drips down into uh, into the ground and forms these streaks. All right so now let's add some atmosphere to Mars just to make it a little bit more habitable and as I'm increasing this I'm going to talk a little bit more about why this is important. So we know that in deserts um, on, on our planet, on, on Earth, uh, if deliquescence occurs, if there is actually a very, very dry desert and deliquescence occurs, what usually happens um, 
to uh, to the actual area where it occurs, there is usually some kind of life. In other words, maybe the desert itself is very dry and very dead, but whenever the quests occurs and whenever there is like liquid water that forms inside the desert or is somewhere in the desert, if there's moisture that occurs somewhere, in that particular area there's always bacterial life. It's without exception. Um, there's many, many deserts where it has been investigated and we always found life there. In other words, what this suggests is that if, uh, since there is liquid water on, on Mars, there is a very, 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 very likely chance, or at least some kind of a chance, that it's possible that Mars may also have bacterial life on it. It's a crazy exciting finding because, uh, you know, when there's liquid water, or where is there's liquid water on our planet, there is always life. It doesn't matter where it is, uh, it can be super hot, it can be super cold, uh, but there's always life. Now we're going to add enough atmosphere to increased pressure to basically uh, survivable. In other words, we don't want it to be too high, we want it to be just above 57% of um, one atmosphere on Earth, because 57% of atmospheric pressure is where humans can still live and not die. Uh, usually people can live higher, but a normal person can still survive at an altitude of about 4,000 meters or about 12,000 feet uh, in the mountains without really any any concern so that's a pressure of approximately 57 percent of atmospheric pressure i'm, I'm actually making it 59 percent but let's just make it 57 57.9 there we go and this is the pressure we're going to have on mars for it to be terraformed this has increased our greenhouse effect to 104 degrees celsius that's quite a lot because mars is actually very small in comparison to earth it's also about 10 percent of the mass of earth so not only is gravity here lower but also um, the uh, the actual atmospheric pressure doesn't require as much atmosphere in terms of actual mass. Now, there's one thing missing from Mars, and that's of course, many of you have mentioned this when I made my first video, you can't have atmosphere without having a magnetic field. Now, this time in the game we can actually include magnetic field, it's actually a thing now, and of course Mars has no magnetic field. Now, this is a really interesting thing about magnetic field, is that we actually still have no real idea how it works and what causes it. There's a lot of theories, there's a lot of uh, competing theories. The, I think the most famous theory is that if you look at Earth, and let's go to Earth for a second, you can see the magnetosphere around Earth. And the reason why we think Earth, Earth has that is because inside we have liquid iron uh, core, or not the core, but outer core, liquid iron, iron that kind of flows around and it has a charge and because of that it creates this magnetosphere. Now that's a very interesting theory because we also know that whenever you heat up iron past a certain point, specifically past 1200 degrees Celsius, and I don't really know how much this is in Fahrenheit, but it's, uh, it's about 1500 Kelvin, um, what happens is it actually loses its magnetic properties. It no longer can be a magnet. So a hot iron cannot really create magnetosphere. I mean, that's that's just science there. So we don't, again, we're assuming it's iron, the molten iron inside, but at the same time, we also know that molten iron doesn't really have any magnetic properties. At the same time, we also know sun has magnetic properties and it doesn't really have any molten iron in it. We also know that uh, Jupiter has really strong magnetic field and as does Saturn, um, and neither do they. They don't really have any, uh, so if you look at, this is Jupiter, look at how big its magnetic field is, it's huge. And where is that coming from? Is it also iron? Where's the iron from? We, we didn't know there was so much iron inside uh, inside Jupiter either. So it's kind of still a mystery. We we uh, we don't we kind of have speculations, but we don't really know exactly how this works. Uh, one day we'll discover, but not today. Not today, young sirs and young ladies. Today we're going to be talking about Mars. So how can we actually form a magnetic field on Mars? Uh, because it needs one, otherwise the uh, the solar flares and all kinds of solar radiation will actually strip away our atmosphere. If I run this for many, many years without a magnetic sphere, um, you'll see that there's actually going to be mass, even right now there's mass loss, 27 kilograms per second. It's losing mass because it has no magnetic sphere. Now, um, what is magnetic sphere? Well, it's, you know, it's, it's a... It's something that's caused by um, uh, by a flow of electricity. One thing I actually read someone proposes, well, what if we build a very, 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 very large 
copper wiring across the planet. Essentially, you take a very large tube of copper and you kind of like just make it go around the planet, around the entire planet of Mars. And then you, what you do is you, you start flowing electrical charge, elect, electrical current through it, very, very powerful electrical current. Well, that's actually a very, very rough, but a possible viable solution to how we could create a magnetic field around Mars. Obviously not the best solution, I'm sure in hundreds of years we'll come up with something better. But for now, let's imagine there is a copper wiring running around the planet that creates um, a magnetic field of approximately 0 uh, 0.3 Gauss, which is really kind of similar to what Earth has. And this will create uh, a protection for us from the solar flares. And uh, look at that, mass loss is now zero. We're not losing anything any anymore. Actually, we're losing just a little bit, but not enough for us to worry about because now we are protected from the sun. Our atmosphere is also secure and protected. So yeah, look at that. We have atmospheric uh, pressure of 58.7 kilopascals, which is about 58% of um, atmospheric pressure on Earth. So that's, that's this is already a viable place to live. The only problem is that it's still really, really cold. Now, why is it so cold? We have a greenhouse effect, right? Well, all we have to do, to do now is just wait. We're going to run this for a few years and watch how the temperature increases to a more uh, viable temperature. The water is going to melt and we will then have a perfectly terraformed Mars. So this is basically with a, a really large copper wiring that creates an artificial magnetic field and uh, something that creates atmosphere of about 58% of atmosphere on Earth. Now, the thing is, if we actually go a little bit higher than 58%, what will happen is, um, unfortunately, this will also raise the greenhouse effect, and this will make the planet a little bit too toasty for, our, for life on it. It's going to be way, way above, um, I think it's, it goes above 50 degrees Celsius, which is really hot, actually. Um, but at the same time, having it at 58 percent is usually enough all right and while we're waiting for everything here to melt and to kind of get more terraformed so let's just talk a little bit about why uh why it's even possible to have liquid water on mars uh, so there's something called brine water and this is water that contains a large amount of salt basically very 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 salty water will stay liquid even when it's really cold or when the pressure is really low um, normal water at low pressure will just evaporate, it will boil, boil away and um, it will turn into ice if there's a lot of pressure and it's really cold as well. So um, to have water at uh, present, liquid water present at minus 23 degrees, it has to have a lot of salt in it. Kind of like, imagine the water that you find in Dead Sea in Israel. Um, so that kind of water is called brine water but even more saltier than that even even thicker even even more salty uh this would be the kind of water that you can find on mars and the thing is there is even in, in dead sea it's not really dead there's there's actually life in dead sea there's micro uh, microbial life there's microbes that can easily survive and here we go hey liquid water it is now warm enough for us to swim in the water uh, it's getting warmer and warmer as as the time passes. These uh, ice caps do not want to disappear though, but that's okay. We can have those little ice caps on, in the north and in the south. Now, so yes, it's really exciting that uh, since there's liquid water, it's very likely that, uh, or not very likely, but it's actually, there's even more reason to look for life on Mars now because it's possible that it's present. All right, and it looks like we've actually achieved a quite a nice stable environment here. It's still kind of getting hot and warm here and there, but it, it goes between about 40 degrees Celsius in the winter to about 40 degrees, uh, 42 degrees Celsius in the summer. It's still a little bit too hot, to be honest, but if I were to decrease this a little bit, let's just actually go to exactly 57%, which is really pushing it, but this is basically the border of when we can still survive. And people can actually get a, get used to even living at, in lower atmospheric pressure, uh, but we just want to see how low the temperature goes. And also, because the water has melted now, there's um, less albedo, so 
it will actually be at around 0.34, which is 34% re reflectivity. In other words, it will reflect more light from the surface. So here we go. The surface temperature has decreased to about 35. So this would be like a very tropical place to live. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot turn this green in, uh, in the game right now. It would be nice to see actual luscious fields and forests and so on, but it, it just doesn't really work that way in the game yet. But maybe in the future version, we'll have an ability to completely terraform a planet and make it green and beautiful just like Earth. And here we go. Here's our winter summer cycle. It's anywhere between 30 degrees to about 33 degrees. Every summer and every winter we have um, a functioning uh, magnetic field and we also have really nice temperature of about 30-ish um, degrees while having a pressure of approximately 57% of pressure on Earth. So this is kind of like living in the mountains at an altitude of about 4,000, maybe 5,000 meters. Actually, no, about 4,000 meters, which is 12,000 feet. And just to summarize the finding from NASA as we look at this beautiful Mars in its glory. Well, yes, so we have liquid water on Mars. It's not as dry as, as we thought it was. And that also implies that it's quite likely that maybe, just maybe, there is also microbial life present in those patches where the water is actually present. So it's worth for us to try to land more probes in the locations where um, the liquid water has been actually discovered, or at least signs of liquid water have been discovered, and at the same time start looking for microbial life there. And here we go, we stabilized our Mars. This is its temperature, this is its pressure, and this is what it looks like when terraformed. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, hopefully you enjoyed this um, terraforming Mars 2.0 video, and hopefully you subscribe and watch some of the other Universe Sandbox 2 videos that I posted before. And don't forget, every Saturday we have our Twitch session when we're going to be using either Kerbal Space Program or possibly Universe Sandbox 2 and do some crazy fun things together. So subscribe, like this video, and game you later, bye bye! Goodbye Mars, and hopefully see you someday more terraformed than you currently are.